So um, I'm here today um, to talk to you about uh, banking revolution or evolution, depending on how you look at it, uh, using PSD2 APIs. But uh, I'm not go going to talk about this mandatory part where banks have to comply, where, ha where banks have to open their APIs. Uh, I would like to talk about the part where banks or in, in this particular case, uh, Swedbank acts as a fintech or a startup to aggregating those APIs of, uh, of other banks. So this is going to be a story of, of how we manage to, to, to do that. Uh, I don't know how many of you know what PSD2 is, the directive, some hands, okay. Uh, so I'll briefly go through that just for us all to be on the same page and then I'll tell s some more information of how we as a team in, in Swedbank see PSD2, uh, a, a team of uh, who aggregates APIs see PSD2 and um, then I'll cover up, well, most part probably will be challenges because it wasn't wasn't a easy easy road there, and uh, of course after challenges there are some successes. So I'll, I'll I'll give some input on that as well. So PSD2, uh, the second payment service directive. Uh, this is very uh, official descriptions, but to put it in a simple way. Um, Banks, as a financial institutions, are obliged to open up access to their uh, data via APIs, and that's a mandatory part. Uh, and uh, there's non-mandatory part where uh, fi financial uh, sector players like uh, fintechs could step in and uh, aggregate uh, data from those APIs. So. Uh, this kind of twofold. And my team falls under the latter category. We are aggregating, not providing the API. Uh, with uh, what uh, PSD2 enables uh, is three sided, or there are three possible uh, services uh, account information, meaning that. Uh, fintechs or startups or third-party providers uh, could get uh, account information, balances and statements, those uh, two fall under this category, and payment in initiation. So basically in this case, uh, fintechs could use the infrastructure of uh, banks to initiate payments from their service. And there's a third one uh, called confirmation of funds uh, I'm not very good at that because we did not find any use out of it, so I did not put it in a slide, but there's third one, just not that important for us, so no info on, those, on that. And going deeper into what's, what's in the PSD2, so uh, an actor or a player uh, which aggregates or uses APIs is called the third party provider. And uh, I added some uh, some points that could uh, be important for a third-party provider or a fintech that that could decide to do uh, to use this PSD2 service. So um, there's no screen scraping, purely based on APIs. Uh, some uh, payment initiation services. I, I'm pretty sure, I, I know for sure in Lithuania we're using screen scraping, so that's what banks are wanting to uh, take out of the, of the uh, well, the, the use and, and APIs are a way to do it. And uh, there's no agreements uh, between TPP and bank, meaning that uh, free access, uh, only relies on certification. 
so basically, if I have a certificate, I go to uh, bank, well, call bank's API, and uh, they should allow me if, if, I'm, if I'm licensed. And all of this is regulated by FSA. Uh, FSA is the uh, uh, supervising authority, and I have it written what's, what it is in Latvia, and it's the Financial and Capital Market Commission. I'm not going to read it in Latvia because it will sound, uh, sound funny, but I have it here. And uh, yes, and the, the very important part is that all of this uh, is done with the consent of the user. There's no background stuff going on. A user must uh, consent on this. Uh, and the consent is given using SCA, strong customer authentication, and examples could be smart ID, mobile ID, ID card, any tool that's used by, by a bank to uh, authenticate the user. So more about consent. Uh, as I said before, there are two parts, uh, account information and payment initiation. So account information uh, has a granularity of account balance and statement, uh, but account is not commonly used. Some of the providers use it. It basically means that if you consent to give only accounts, you only give uh, account number to a third party provider. Balances include uh, amounts of, uh, well, the amounts that user possesses in, in their accounts. And statement is a list of transactions and payment initiation in most cases does not need a uh, consent, but some uh, providers would uh, require that because they would not give out uh, account, uh, well, account, number, uh, account numbers yes, to, to initiate those payments. And this consent is, uh, has a limited period of uh, time w when it's uh, active, and it's up to 90 days. It's regulated by the the, the directive. Uh, it can be revoked any time, and uh, if the STA, strong customer authentication, is done, then it, it gets uh, renewed. And I tried to draw a simply, simplified uh, way, of how, of way of how this all this works. So basically, user PSU, that's the uh, abbreviation used in uh, in the directive, uh, th this could could uh, display uh, any any application. I in our case, it's either mobile bank or uh, internet bank. So user gives a consent uh, to a third party provider. In in this case, it's us, uh, uh, my, my team, and uh, we get data from AS. PSP, which stands for Account Servicing Payment Service Provider, very interesting name, and we get data from them. We display data to the user or uh, to Internet Bank, and FSA uh, supervises it all. Uh, so how we saw it, uh, the deadline, the final uh, deadline for mandatory part to be uh, implemented was uh, September 14th uh, this year. So uh, our team was assembled one and a half years before that, uh, spring uh, last, uh, last year. And we started doing stuff uh, w with uh, this. Uh, and with the first ones, uh, first APIs we, we came to, we saw that there are plenty of interpretations on the directive, uh, but since our home market is, is Baltic states and Scandinavia, we kind of looked into this region, mostly into this region, and this, this, the, the, most of the banks of this region uh, uh, are covered by Berlin Group. This, this is kind of a standard uh, for this region uh, where banks agreed to do do those APIs a certain way. However, even this uh, this group has some uh, interpretations. Not not some, but quite quite a lot actually, because the text is uh, uh, legal text uh, uh, is written about technical stuff. So whoever reads it uh, interprets it, and uh, it uh, it took us almost 
over yeah it, it was over a year uh, until we managed to do a, f a first go live and it was a month earlier than the final mandatory part deadline uh, it wasn't a mandatory for us but uh, if you want to be competitive it, th th it's a way to do it uh, as for our technical stack uh, we chose a simple spring boot and, and microsoft sql as a database and we consider ourselves a, a small startup in a large corporation because uh, we started with a blank page of paper there was there were no legacy systems uh, nothing to to connect us to so we had a blank page and we started uh, from scratch building up so that's how we saw that uh, and it's a strong question, but what it's like to be the first in the financial industry? Uh, with that comes uh, risk, comes challenges, but, but with, uh, with high, higher risk comes uh, better gains. Uh, so um, we decided to go the agile way, uh, divide the, all this PSD2 uh, availabilities into smaller bits and de deliver bit by bit, uh, introduce all, all new functionality. So, uh, and uh, the scope that we chose was only our customers, even though we could expand it to, to, uh, to non-customers, but that's a future plan. And the uh, first MVP was uh, showing balances. Uh, now, with, with this comes uh, challenges and uh, I tried to uh, d describe uh, those challenges a as deep as I, I was able to, and probably <clears throat> the 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 one that was the most time-consuming actually uh, was a certification. This uh, first part, um, there are two certificates that are needed: Kuwak and Kuseal. Uh, with Kuwak. Uh, we, la, this time last year, so last November, we decided that we'll, it'll take us approximately two sprints to, to release something that's viable to, well, to use. But to have something live uh, meant that w we would need a certificate. So uh, it took us half a year to get that certificate because uh, Eventually, we found out that uh, even though the certificate was defined to be needed for API communication, uh, how the certificate should look like was only introduced uh, around March this year. So uh, after half a year, we only got our first certificates. And with Kuseal, we still struggle a bit because, well, it's a different story there. And uh, to add more complexity to that, uh, since Swedbank is a, um, is a group of companies, we have uh, three legal entities in, in Baltic states, one for each country. We have a Sweden uh, branch or Sweden bank. And uh, in Sweden, there are savings banks that fall under the Swedbank. Well, they use Swedbank's infrastructure. So in total, in total we would have we will need to handle around 60 certificates. And that means uh, two certificates. So in total, it's 120. But we had some, some troubles with that, uh, but we finally managed to do that. But the buying part for those savings banks will be a trouble because every certificate needs to be signed by the CEO. Another legal challenge is passporting. Uh, in <coughs> sorry. Every country, every legal entity has to uh, get the permit to operate uh, outside of the country. And uh, we had experiences now with the three Baltic states. So it was fairly easy with Estonian uh, one. Uh, from Estonia, we can go anywhere we want. They were very, they were very flexible with this. Uh, from Lithuania, we can only go to Estonia, well, to, to request data from only from Esto local and from Estonia, and I think Finland, but we, we don't have any, any business there yet. Uh, 
and Latvian FSA uh, wasn't very grateful, so on, you can only, for now, only can stay locally. No, no outside uh, APIs to be used in Latvia, unfortunately. And I added the third part. Uh, this is more of a for your information, if, if needed, because uh, since we are uh, a bank, we didn't need to, to get all those because it was included in our banking license. Uh, another very, very important and very challenging part is testing the solution. And uh, obviously, uh, directive uh, requires uh, banks to provide the sandbox environments. Uh, that's a okay help, uh, but uh, since we released our first uh, APIs to production, we noticed some things like differences in production and development environment. And now we have s bits of code that uh, uh, are covered by if-else statement. If environment is test, do stuff like this. If environment is not test, do stuff like this. So that's, uh, that's kind of tricky and uh, not very nice looking code. And uh, data quality, there are examples where uh, hard-coded values are provided in, in, uh, in uh, sandboxes and you initiate a payment for one amount with this, this certain type of uh, uh, message where this money is going to and you receive a status with completely different va values and all those values, uh, well, the responses are always the same. So it's tricky to, to debug and, 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 and make it right. And the lack of documentation, a uh, tricky place, well, tricky part as well. Uh, some banks not, are not very friendly uh, with providing the documentation or the documentation differs from the actual result or even documentation sandbox and development is completely different parts. So all the real testing is done in production. Uh, we basically develop a sandbox then we have a pre-production environment where uh, money is real, accounts are real, uh, uh, accounts, uh, well, yeah, everything is in, in real. Even some, some banks are actually even tested in our internet bank, but just hidden uh, uh, under some access groups. Uh, and to, to do all this testing, we needed accounts open to be opened in, in, in those uh, other banks. So last year, uh, one, one of our business people uh, called the Latvian and Estonian banks. So uh, Estonian said no right away. And some of the Latvian banks said, sure, why not? Let's do it. So I uh, like six of us uh, uh, drove here to Riga. Uh, we visited multiple branches of banks and out of, I don't know, six, seven banks that we visited, uh, two of them agreed after some per persuasion and a lot of discussions, meeting managers and stuff to open, to open accounts. So it was a really interesting uh, trip for opening banks, uh, bank accounts. Uh, and. Uh, there's one, one, more, one more thing, uh, communication. Uh, of course, APIs come for free, so free stuff is never easy to get or you have to put a lot of effort to it. Uh, and if we aggregate uh, multiple banks, uh, we have to keep track of version changes, obviously. Uh, some, some banks don't even uh, consider to uh, alert us if they have deployments or any maintenance windows where the system is down. Uh, so that that's sometimes, well, it, it always gets to uh, us to be blamed because it doesn't work in our internet bank, even though the provider is not, not returning any data. And unexpected breaking changes. That's a really, really annoying thing when you, see that your integration tests break, start breaking and uh, 
You have to fix that right away, straight to production, sometimes. Uh, and issue reporting, since we have our first uh, API ag uh, aggregate and, and released to live, uh, to live, uh, we started uh, getting responses from customers that there are problems, uh, we report them, still a problem there that we cannot provide customer data, GDPR stuff, and uh, another issue is that we ask to do something or we ask to fix a, a bug and uh, we don't know the status of this fix, whether it's going to be soon or sometime in the future. So that's a tricky part as well. And uh, um, the happy flow that how, how we imagine it is that the user does authorization, does consent, and we get data. However, um, some banks would say that we don't have authorization, use consent. Some banks say we don't have consent, authorization is enough. So this adds complexity. Uh, and now I want to show you how we managed, well, that's a happy flow uh, done in our internet bank. Probably some of you might have tried it already. already. So you click add other banks, you choose a bank you want to add. Uh, this, uh, there's a part between this screen and the previous one where you do some stuff on a uh, bank site, but I didn't want to put it there. And this is the consent part. So I sign a, a consent to give my balances and statements to Swedbank for those accounts. And now we can see how rich I am. That's actually test data, so. Um, so that, that's uh, what, I, what I told before. What, what's different? Uh, authorization could be done using OAuth token or consent ID, bank dependent. Uh, is a user a real owner or uh, of account? That's more of a kind of GDPR issue or uh, the issue for us as a bank that we want to, we, we want to know our customer. Uh, and uh, we don't want to keep the data of uh, some uh, user that's not our customer and we know nothing about. Uh, consent part, uh, as, I, as I said, there's a way that there's no consent, so global managed uh, case is there. Global managed means that you only do authorization and bank gives every information that you have. Uh, bank managed means that uh, bank uh, controls the consent, meaning that we ask for something, then uh, you do st stuff on bank's side and we get uh, what you decided to give us. And TPP managed is where TPP uh, manages and asks for bank of consent of a certain type. So the flow that you saw before is the TPP managed flow. And problems or challenges with data, uh, when aggregating stuff, there, uh, there's a complexity of uh, providing one solution, but uh, managing to kind of add to, or remove the complexity by doing something similarly. So uh, just a simple example, there are banks that would say that to get the balance of uh, certain accounts, you only need to do uh, one uh, call. To, to API and you get a list of accounts with balances and some would say you have to do a request to get the list of accounts and then for each account do uh, a request. So that's kind of a different ways or different approaches to the same thing. And one more interesting example, uh, file as a response. There's a, uh, it's for statements. So there's an example that if you wanna if you, 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 you ask for a statement of a longer period of time, and if the, the statement exceeds some limits, instead of getting the list of transactions, you would get only a, um, a URL that you will have to go there and download a zip file and then parse it and use it appropriately. appropriately. But that, well, that's uh, one way or one approach one bank chose. Uh, I, w I wanted to as well show some uh, 
differences of how the corporation and startup uh, difference and where we as a larger corporation have uh, have benefits and have problems uh, so as I mentioned we didn't need a license and uh, we had access to all the bank's infrastructure uh, and of course larger pool of ideas but this is because there are more people involved but uh, I want to point out uh, uh, those disadvantages that we ex really experience is that uh, since there are more stakeholders involved in the, in the process uh, we can deliver stuff quite quickly uh, but uh, it lags behind because there are people who need to make decisions and uh, since we work in a Swedish type of environment and Swedish people tend to uh, need to have a full consent where uh, all people are on board um, that's why it takes quite some time and there are uh, issues with lawyers because we as a bank uh, have to comply to some certain uh, rules and we try to do that as best as we can so we have additional payment screening once we we will introduce the might be additional payment screening uh, possibly uh, at least that's what kind of request it's not defined in, in the directive yet but we might need to do it we have additional agreement with the customer just to use the service and account ownership that's another topic uh, already told about it but th this is something that we need to consider uh, while fintechs might not need to consider it because uh, th it could be that those uh, that data they are they are getting is not their users data in a way depending on the situation so after all those uh, challenges a lot of challenges we had some great great moments uh, we tend to send, set goals and then celebrate when we do that uh, so those probably three main uh, celebrations that we had was first certificates as I said it took us half a year so we have to celebrate with pizza and stuff with, with that and the uh, first payment so those are two payments that's a first uh, local payment it was done April 9th this year and it was done using uh, Swedbank's API so we integrated our own API and did it kind of as a going outside and then inside and this is a first international payment uh, done so and the amount was one cent but the fees were extra high and uh, first go live and that's the article in uh, Estonian post uh, it was released August 16 but the actual date was when we released first went live was uh, August 15 one day ago uh, uh, why Estonia actually they managed to get their certificates faster the CEO signed faster that's why Estonia but for us country does not make that much of a difference uh, and we claim to be the first in Europe to launch it so far no one denied that so that's that's uh, that's a fact as of now uh, and there's plenty more to do with the uh, PSD2 payment initiation as I said transaction list uh, is on our way uh, it's already just a small secret it's already in, in, in internet bank just a hidden form uh, we testing it very very thoroughly uh, more banks obviously uh, whole Europe is our playground we can aggregate all the banks in in, uh, in Europe since it's ob ob obligatory for them to open up uh, we can use the data that we have obviously with consent of the user but we, we, we could do that uh, do that offer some stuff uh, provide some uh, budgeting tools any any possibility is there and endless possibility of other APIs uh, wh whatever you could think of like parking uh, 
I don't know, a any, any possible way. Uh, so yeah, so that's, that would be it. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Yeah. Hosted in our, uh, do you mean country? I mean, is it own data center or public cloud? Data center, uh, our own data center. Yeah. No, Estonia. Yes. Certificates. Uh, it's the same as as a cell certificate. Same. It's basically the same certificate. Just it has some additional fields where uh, TPP is identified. That I think there's a scope in there, meaning that uh, this t particular TPP could access maybe dic only account balances or payments as well. So uh, a scope is there, and uh, the identification number of this TPP. So, who is maintaining a certificate authority for that? Is it the FSA or is it someone else? Who is signing certificates so that you know uh, when you receive the certificate, how can you check uh, uh, that you should provide some data? The authority that uh, provides certificates could be any uh, providing agent, agency, um, yeah, agency, but they have to contact the FSA to confirm that this legal entity mm -hmm. is allowed to do that. Sorry, there's an echo. Sure. Uh, hello. Yeah. So I probably have seen recently one PSD do um, payment request. And uh, in so this page redirected to Swedbank PSD2 yes. service. Mm -hmm. And uh, two check boxes were checked is to provide uh, balance yeah. from my for, from all my accounts from to my accounts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that this, this information is not required to okay. proceed with payment. Mm -hmm. So I tried to uncheck these uh -huh. check boxes, but it wasn't possible. So okay. who mandate to to provide this information to is it by payment provider or it, it's mandate by Swedbank? I, I know this case. Yeah. So. Um, in this case, payment initiation service uh, is kind of requested. Uh, to put it in a more technical description, payment initiation service receives the list of your accounts, available accounts. And uh, to initiate the consent, they said that we want balances and statements for those accounts. And then Swedbank API received this information and they displayed you what the payment initiation service requested. So I'm not a legal person, but I wouldn't agree with the way this is done. As you, uh, as you saw, we allow user to check check boxes, what he wants to check. So in this case, it's payment initiation service provider that kind of requested this consent for, for you. Ask in a box. Uh, so, a uh, question. How did you implement that strong customer authentication? Yeah, we did not implement that. Uh, this is provided by the bank. Uh, so basically, in the case that I showed you, this is a redirect flow. So we kind of received the link to other banks uh, page. And then we redirect customer to that page. And then it's uh, the responsibility of the bank to do their stuff, use smart ID or any other uh, type that they use. There is actually a way, uh, so uh, I did not add this to the presentation, but uh, there, there are three ways how this can be achieved. There's a redirect flow, meaning that uh, we redirect customer to the uh, an external page where he does all this strong customer authentication. There's this decoupled method, let's say. It's called decoupled. So uh, it would look like something like that. Uh, you would see the same information that, that you see when you do a, a smart ID signing, 
those numbers and you do that on our page so that's decoupled but it's well uh, as well uh, provided by the the external bank and there's embedded i'm not very sure how that one works yet because we haven't tried implementing any of this but, but do you use consent id or out for that for, that? Uh, for what i mean for uh, tracking for token no basically for tracking the user uh, like a session you use out or, or consent ID? I would say like this, in most cases it's OAuth, but there's one, one bank that only supports consent ID. Nothing more. You identify by consent ID. That's it. Okay, clear. And uh, another question. How did you have, the, do you know, the, you have a list of banks that are allowed to use? I mean, sorry, not banks, but TPPs. Uh, how, where do you get this list that uh, basically all the TPPs that are authorized to use uh, PSD2? Uh, <laughs> It's uh, it's the responsibility. You mean how the bank should uh, know? How the bank should trust TPP? Okay, yeah. Uh, technically, uh, there should be a sol I I'm not very good at this API part because I did not do any any of it. But basically, they should uh, contact some other authority to check whether this TPP has a license and is allowed. But that, that's mostly what I can say. But basically, uh, from this current experience, uh, well, at least for us, it's quite, quite, quite easy. Sweatbank is a known brand. Uh, so we just co communicate directly to the uh, bank and said, we want to do that. Uh, please allow us with this certificate. And they, they allow it. So basically, you worked mostly on PSD2 integration part with other banks, right? Yes, exactly. Not, not the back end itself. Uh, Back end, by back end, you mean API? Yeah, of the bank. PSD2 yeah, API. No. Okay, the, clear. The, the team sits nearby, but I don't do okay. anything. Clear, there. thanks. Where? Yes. Uh, a follow up question on uh, consents. Okay. Do you uh, ask for consents on, uh, for each PPT, or if a customer agreed for a consent, then he agrees for all consents for every PPT? Sorry, did, did not quite get it. The, those uh, consents, yeah? Yeah. To share the payments uh, details and stuff. Do you ask them on every uh, third party? Or you uh, just ask it once and then you record it and that's it? Uh, we, this, what I showed you was an onboarding flow. So okay. we asked this once. Only once, but once. only for one flow. But if there's more flows, like other third parties. Uh, you yeah. Agree? So you other ask, banks? Yeah. yeah. Dif different flow. Different flow. Yes. So, okay. And you can revoke them at any point. Yes. Okay. And by phone as well. By phone? By phone. Yes. Uh, if I call a bank, can they revoke a consent? Yeah. Okay. Should be. Is there a way for a user, for a bank user, for example, to check uh, um, which third parties have um, access uh, through this mechanism? So yes. Uh, it's, well, I know from Swedbank's perspective. So if you uh, open up settings of your accounts, basically there are three, three tabs there. Aliases of those accounts, then there's a part where uh, our uh, consent is stored. And then there's this third part where uh, there are list, uh, there's a list of uh, TPPs that gain access to your account. And there you can change whatever you like. It's just that this, this part is managed by API team, so I'm, I'm not very familiar with it. Probably more question about smart ID. So maybe it's not the right person to ask, but maybe you still know. Uh, as I noticed, it's not possible to use smart ID currently uh, in case of mobile application for uh, when you, if you want to use on the same device, uh, 
Swedbank, Litwe, Estonian, and Latvian. So you can choose Smart ID only for one of them. Okay, I'm not the right person to ask. Right. Answer. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Any more questions? No. Okay. Uh, then I have last the, question. One okay. more. Data aggregation, you're keeping data where? Database? <laughs> no, <laughs> okay, for what purpose? You said that you are allowed to use them further. Uh, as of now, until this point, uh, we're keeping data for uh, performance purposes. We don't use it. So if you revoke it, we delete it. We don't need it. Uh, but if you consent, for something that, let's say, uh, some offers would be made, then we could keep it and share it to some teams that could reuse that data. But uh, at this point, we only use it for uh, performance issues, meaning that some banks respond slowly. Let's say if we take uh, transactions uh, to display. So we fetch it and uh, we store it, we display it, if you said, Forget about me, we delete it. Uh, and something else I was want to say. Oh, yeah. And there's uh, this thing that uh, we actually, as a TPP, we cannot request data if you're not there. Uh, meaning that only if you're logged in into Internet Bank, in our example, then on your behalf, we could request data. But if not, no. We cannot do that. For how long time you can keep them? Data? Mm -hmm. Depends on the country. But if, you, if we have a consent, we keep it for 90 days or as long as the consent is valid. If the consent is no longer valid, clear. You delete. Okay. So you did mention that you're not going to like request data when user is not there. Yeah. Is it just you're not going to do it or you're technically not capable of doing it? Uh, there are some safety bits put in the APIs. Uh, one example, uh, we have to pass uh, the IP address of the user in order to get data. That's a header parameter in the request that we have to provide in order to get data. And th there should be more. But I mean, technically, you could fake it, but that's not very nice. The last one. Can you catch it? I wanted to help, sorry. Hello. Hello. Uh, two questions. How big is your team working on particularly on aggregation, not the open banking, just aggregation? And second question is, how are you going? What's your strategy against the changing uh, specifics of uh, other banks' APIs? So how are you, how are you going to provide a constant service to your customers? Because I know that the banks, they might change things yeah. uh, without warning. Okay, so um, uh, the team size for aggregation is we are um, four developers, one tester, uh, to business individuals and the team manager and the API team, I don't want to lie, but around 15 people in Vilnius. There might be some in uh, Sweden as well, but I'm not, not, not sure. And uh, about this changes, we expect changes. Uh, we have some time reserve for updating. Uh, Meaning, if you mean version change, or I, 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 I'm not sure, but uh, what, what I meant was, uh, if you connect, let's say if in the future, 10, 15 banks, so your customers are able to see the accounts on the in the internet yes. bank of the sweat bank, right? Yeah. So what if two of these banks, let's say next day, they change some specifications to the APIs? And the service is not available for you anymore. Uh, anymore. Let's say they change the request for uh, requirements for headers, or for. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I get. So I get the how question. How are you going to yeah. to monitor or s uh, make sure that the, your service is constant? Yeah. As, okay. I, as I said in in a. This 
this problem was supposed to happen only until September 14th. Uh, after that, the uh, directive kind of states that you have to give the period for TPPs to prepare. Uh, it's like half a year before huge changes that they have to introduce or, uh, well, to inform TPPs about them. So, so you're basically basically you're counting uh, you're counting on being informed by yes, the bank okay. or okay. checking ourselves. Yeah, but I mentioned that as a as a problem that communication is not a very strong uh, point there. Okay, thank you. And here will be last one question. Hi, I have a question. If a licensed TPP is knocking your door and uh, can you reject the access for any reasons, compliance or? You don't like the reputation or any other reasons? TPP? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm on a team that, that is a TPP, so I'm not very uh, good at answering that, but probably yes. As I said, there's, uh, I cannot remember the name of this uh, service that provides uh, the response if the TPP is supported. So uh, API team or API uh, owner should check for this information and yeah they can uh, they can uh, deny the access uh, just a simple example uh, i tried today we tr tried to, to access one of the bank's api and i got uh, 403 response that i'm not allowed in it was a first try with the with the valid certificate and i got 403 response from, but from are they allowed to yeah, reject they should legally be yes that that that's that's in in the directive. It should be there. Okay. I mean, I, I've heard talks about this that the check is there or will be there. So yes. Okay, I have a last question. Can we publish your slides at the Dev Club site? So several people already asked me. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Good. Then we have we have a movie in Latvia about the rascal boy. Okay. He says that most important thing is that your feet would be warm. Therefore, we brought your socks. Oh. Dev Club socks. Okay. Yeah, Thank they you. will be always warm. And uh, chocolate for, nice. for, for brain nice. work. Yeah. Thank you. It's lime and not pergola. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.